Hello world, this is Cinema Stuff, and I'm back for another movie review. Today I'm going to be doing my first request. This is from my friend Rob, who also does reviews. And the movie I'm going to be talking about is In Bruges. Now this movie came out in 2008, and I heard a lot about it at the time, or especially around award season, but I didn't really know what it was. Um, if you look online, like at a synopsis, um, it'll say that it's about two hitmen waiting in the city of Bruges to hear from their boss, and yes, that is a very, very basic plot synopsis, but there's so much more that's going on in this movie. Um, it's rated R for good reason, um, and the movie is an hour and 47 minutes long, so kind of long, but not too bad. Um, it stars Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell as the two hitmen, and then um, Rafe finds as their boss. Now, the first two-thirds of the movie are really about this kind of uh, odd couple relationship that Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson's characters have. Um, they're, so they're stuck in the city, Bruges, which is this really historic kind of touristy um, town, I believe in Belgium, that um, Colin Farrell's character just absolutely hates because he doesn't like history, but Brendan Gleeson loves because there's all this medieval stuff and architecture and uh, art and relics uh, and religious stuff. And so right off the bat, you have kind of kind of conflict, but um, clearly a strong friendship between these two characters. And Colin Farrell's character is he's kind of ADHD or something, I don't know, but he, he says basically whatever comes to mind and is very vocal about his hatred for Bruges and everything to do with it. And this gets him into trouble um, multiple times, um, but eventually he starts to like it um, because he meets a girl. And, uh, but uh, Brendan Gleeson's character as I said, just likes doing all the touristy things. And so the first two-thirds of the movie um, are basically kind of this fun bickering character study type thing. Um, but then you get to learn uh, about more about Colin Farrell's character, Ray, and you find out that he actually does have a deeper uh, moral conflict going on that relates to um, the job that they did um, assassinating someone. And this is really haunting him, and it has some interesting twists related to that. But then things really start to pick up once um, their boss, Harry, comes into the picture. Because at first he's just kind of this name scary name that you keep hearing, but then once you actually see that it's Rafe Fiennes, it's really a very comical but also scary um, villain type character. Um, he has a really hilarious line that I'd, um, I'd seen a clip of before where he, uh, he insults his wife by calling her an inanimate object, which is, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's really funny. Um, I should say that this movie, um, as far as being rated R, it uses the F word and the C word to an extent that you just get used to it because that's just how these people are talking to each other and how they um, express themselves, I guess. But So a lot of language that would not be appropriate for small children, but anyone, you know, teenager, adult, should be fine with it. And then you get to the violence in the last third of the movie. And the violence, I'd say, is on par with Fight Club, in that there are some very disturbing and, and uh, gruesome images. And, I don't know, that's not, not really the sort of stuff I like, but I can't say that it's the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean... It's not exploitation type violence, it's just kind of extreme. Uh, 
But yeah, so the last bit is has a lot more action and gore. And something I really loved about this movie was that the writing, um, which I believe is also done by the director, Martin McDonough or something like that. Sorry, I probably butchered his name. Um, but everything, every time that Ray got himself into trouble earlier in the movie comes back to haunt him. And just everything that builds up to that last third really comes full circle. And then you get to an ending that's very ambiguous. You don't know whether one of the characters lives or dies. And so it's not the most satisfying ending, but at the same time it's very fitting because of the moral dilemmas that are going on underneath all the bickering. And overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I want to give it a 7.5 out of 10 because of the extreme violence at the end, but it's just such a great movie, I've got to give it an 8 out of 10. So thank you again, Rob, for the suggestion, and I'll see you next time. It's Cinema Steph. Bye.